can you really get started with your film production company with as little as 10 bucks? In this video, I'm gonna show you three simple things that you can do today that will bring you one step closer to beginning the creation of your digital media empire without spending a fortune on startup. Literally, it'll cost you all of 10 bucks and you never have to leave your house to make it happen. Now, what you're about to watch is the exact same training from my upcoming independent movie studio startup bootcamp, where not only will I show you how to set up a film production company from start to finish, but I will also be showing you how to set it up so that it is both tax efficient and a money magnet. You can find out more about this training as well as how to save 97% off during the pre-sale in the link below the video. But for now, let's get right into the training. This is what we're gonna talk about today. How to start your film production company with 10 bucks. So again, this is what we're gonna talk about today. How to start your film production company with just 10 bucks. I don't want people to get too overwhelmed, so I'm gonna keep this stuff just very, very simple. This is gonna be very easy for you to do from the comfort of your home. It's gonna be very baby step stuff because we're gonna be talking about more in terms of how to get started with your film production company. I just want you guys to do these three simple things in order to get started. That's all you have to do. So let's get right into it. So the first thing that I want you to do is obviously decide on your and I'm not even gonna say film production company name, I'm gonna say your brand name. So, let me see, let me say brand name. Decide on your brand name. So, again, I've got the Paul Donis Thompson brand, but my film production company is Bad Your Productions LLC. So actually, let me, let me go back, let me do something. That'll be another one. Let's just keep it succinct. on your uh, let's see, production company name. And here's the danger that people get themselves into. Now, maybe not you because you're probably just brand new. You probably don't even have a YouTube channel, but a lot of big creators that I follow, what they'll do is they'll speak this stuff into existence. And then they'll go and do, <clears throat> excuse me, step three from what I'm gonna tell you guys to do and they'll see that somebody's taking their shit. Before you start blabbing to your friends and everybody about what you plan to do, what your company name is, go somewhere, write it down, come up with a few names for your thing, decide on what your film production company name is because this is something you got to live with. Like, I like Bad Joy Productions because it's a, I <laughs> forget, oh, forgive me. It's either an oxymoron or a misnomer, like Bad Joy. Those two don't go together, so that's why I like it. That's the company that I've been running with. So you want to go ahead and decide on your production company name. Now, part two is the most important part of this before you spend that $10 that I'm gonna tell you to do. So step two, do a business name search with your secretary of state. So let me just show you exactly what that looks like. So basically, before you go spending money, you wanna make sure that this name that you've come up with, this awesome, cool name, it's not actually taken already. My, uh, and I'm using Wyoming, two reasons. One of them is my corporate, my, uh, I'm incorporated in Wyoming. And then the second thing is, interestingly enough, Texas charges a dollar every single time you wanna do a name search. I'm from Texas, I'm from Houston, Texas. And I actually remembered that before I left when I was thinking of different names for, I think another holding company or operating company I want to create. It was a dollar per search and they want you to put in your credit card information to do that. So I'm showing you this with Wyoming because again, this is where my company is. So let's see, if I look at Bad Joy Productions, see it's already, fill it in, search that, see it's already taken. So no one can come to 
at least in Wyoming, they can't file for Bad Joe Productions LLC in Wyoming. And as you can see, it's in good standing. You always want to make sure that you have your fees to be able to renew your thing. So think this stuff in advance. But we're not we're not doing the uh, we're not doing the LLC thing today. I just want you to check to make sure that wherever you're thinking about incorporating, because we will be doing LLCs. We will not be doing trash DBAs. We'll be doing LLCs, and you want to make sure that wherever you decide to incorporate in that name is free and clear. So do a few searches and also put the LLC name behind your thing. So again, we're just going to do that. Go, you know, if you're in Mississippi, go to your Mississippi secretary of state. If you're in Boston, go to your Boston secretary of state. If you're in California, go to your California secretary of state, whatever name you decide to come up with, make sure it's not already taken. So again, you got number one, decide on your production company name. Uh, step two, do a business name search with your secretary of state. That's very important because you don't want to, you know, get your hopes up and then see that it's already taken. You can't do anything with it. Now, step three, this is all I want you to do. You're going to lock down your domain name. Now there's more steps to this. Like I would actually want you to go to YouTube as well and make sure that that name is not taken on YouTube. But for right now, this is all I want you to do is to, once you've determined that the name is not taken and once you've done a business search in whichever state you plan to incorporate in. So again, I'm in New Orleans, but my production company is in Wyoming. That's where I incorporated at with my LLC. So that's where I would do the name search. I want you to go and lock down the domain name. Let me show you what that looks like. So you're going to go to I use namecheap.com. I, I use them for literally everything. I mean, some people use GoDaddy and some people use, you know, whatever. I love Namecheap. It's pretty straightforward. Now, the reason I say 10 bucks is because it's actually eight, 888 per year, but you know, with tax and stuff, it's probably gonna come out to about 10 bucks. But all you have to do is go to the domain name search and type in the domain you're thinking about. So let's say you're thinking about John, John Productions dot com and actually i'm telling you this and you probably should have 20 bucks because you're going to want to lock this one down and the llc one down because you don't want people to uh what's the word when you like sweep you so you want to be clear and what i'm trying to say is so i have badjoyproductions.com and i also have badjoyproductionsllc.com so even still, I can set it up to a way to where if someone goes to badjoyproductions.com and I have the website set up for badjoyproductionsllc.com, it can then redirect them to badjoyproductionsllc.com. So actually, I would say do 20 bucks. I want you to lock down both. But again, that's why it's very important to make sure that this stuff isn't taken before you do it. Now, let me do this search. So johnjohnproductions.com, is it taken? If you are a John John and you wanted John John productions.com, you could get this for 10 bucks, 888. But again, with tax, it's going to be probably 10 bucks. Now, don't worry about the dot net, the dot dev, the dot AI, dot club, dot, uh, what is it, dot org. Don't worry about that crap. Dot me. I would only recommend dot me just to, like, whenever you determine what your name is, like, if you're going to go with, like, I got Paul, Don Paul Donis Thompson dot me because and it's around that brand name but i wouldn't worry about it for your production company not at all because dot com still rules and that's going to be that forever like even if somebody came behind you and did john john productions dot what's one that could be like even close dot page like nobody's going to look for a dot page they're not going to look for a dot app you know this is all of these are just trash like and that's why look at this dot site. Nobody's gonna type in dot site when they're looking for your thing. That's why it's the 188, I mean one dollar eighty eight cents because these are just like you know, hey, if these per these people aren't really paying attention and they're just paranoid, I used to do that too. I mean, I would, I would lock down dot you know org dot you know tv dot you know. I will say that yeah. So maybe only maybe, and and I really don't even. It's not even a big deal. You know, you may want to lock down. Like if you're going to be having your films on your 
thing you may want to lock down dot tv i honestly it's not really a big deal the dot tv one is more expensive like i'll show you right now you know if you're going to be having your own like streaming service or whatever it's like 30 bucks i wouldn't really worry about it you know when people are looking for your thing it's going to be the dot com option so this is something you can do tonight today again just to recap Hopefully you can read my handwriting there and I'll just read over it again, just in case anybody's watching this later. How to start your film production company with 10 bucks, more like 20, because again, I want you to lock down .com and uh, LLC, um, you know, whatever, whatever, dot L, I mean, LLC.com. So like that John John Productions, it'd be John John Productions, LLC.com. And that's all I want you to do, because again, there's gonna be a lot more steps that you have to take, but this is very easy. Like this is something that you can, do and it'll give you a it'll get you closer to actually getting started and again first step is to decide on your production company name the second step is to do a business name search with your secretary of state wherever you are thinking about incorporating that is where you're going to do the search third thing is to lock uh, lock down your domain name i should probably say names because again i want you to lock down the dot com and i want you to lock down whatever your thing is add llc at the end of it dot com and that's going to probably take you about 20 bucks and what you want to do if you're even more smarter than that do two things you want to make sure that whenever you do this process of hold on this is very important as well whenever you lock these things down auto have this thing set up to where it automatically renews because the thing is if your thing pops and you become really like big in whatever you're doing you're gonna have vultures waiting for you to slip up so basically yeah these are two things i want to tell you have enough money set aside to where you can renew these things for at least three to five years and have them set to auto renew because the thing like if bad Joe productions pops i'm gonna have vultures waiting around to see if they can snap up that domain name you know, if Bad Joe Productions becomes a big thing or Bad Joe Productions LLC, you're gonna have some people trying to ride the wave and just really just try to piss you off. So you wanna have these things set to auto renew. That way, let's say you forget that, oh I, crap, I need to renew the, the uh, renewal fee. It'll automatically be set up and make sure you have a credit card that's not, you know, expired or maxed out. Namecheap is really good about letting you know a uh, about a month, at least 30 days ahead, that, hey, this thing is coming up. And another thing is, if you decide to change your name or you change your mind, you can always just turn the auto renew off and you can just let the domain expire. I've had lots of domains that I've never done with, not anything with, because I've changed my mind, went another direction. Yeah, I hit, took a hit on the front end, but it's like, you know, after that, you don't have to even worry about it anymore. But the domains that I know that I'm gonna end up doing something with at some point in time, I keep those on auto renew. And then also, you know, you make sure you have enough money set aside to where you can pay the renewal fees. And once you're starting to make money with what you're doing, then, you know, it's a foregone conclusion that you just set the money aside, just have it just keep doing its thing. So that's really all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Please continue on to the next module in this training. Talk soon.